The story starts as it lets us in on how the world is on its last legs, and out pops this demonic tower. Humans start waking up to their own supernatural powers, gearing up to take on the demons that keep pouring out of this tower. Over time, tons of heroes bite the dust, and just as many newbies step up to the plate. But then, out of nowhere, this one hero shows up. This blonde guy got insane talent, nearly flawless smarts, and luck like you would not believe. He actually makes it to the top floor of the tower. This guy becomes the strongest force humanity's got, our best shot at wiping out the darkness. He is popularly hailed as the light of humanity, Lin Zio. At this point, we get the lowdown that it's actually Lin Zio's third rodeo at this demonic tower. This time around, whether it's his attributes or skills, he has maxed out everything. Plus, he has managed to snag all the most powerful weapons and gear the world has to offer. According to the system's interference prompts, clearing the last floor of the demonic tower would put an end to all the chaos. He has made it this far, and a huge shout-out goes to the step-by-step -step hints and help he has gotten from the system interface over the years. Unfortunately, Lin Zio hasn't been able to dig up any dirt on the demonic creatures chilling on the highest level of the tower, and the system's drawing blanks too. While Lin Zio's eyes are glued to his system window, a voice from behind teases him, asking why their senior is zoning out and staring into space again. Another chimes in, joking that he's probably daydreaming about some girl again. Now, our boy finally turns around and hits back at these loudmouths, saying he was just pondering over what happens after they knock out the Demon King. But it is clear these two juniors are not buying his excuse, and deep down, he knows it all too well. Every time he is caught staring at the system interface, he ends up being misunderstood. After all, he is the only one in this world who can see the system interface, so he has got no choice but to whip up some random excuse every time. The sound of high heels clacking against the ground announces the approach of a lady toward the group. Her face is lit up with joy, and as the camera pans out, we see these knights pondering their surroundings. One knight questions if this is indeed the highest floor of the demonic tower, while another wonders about the absence of any boss creature, which is unusual for such a critical location. The third knight muses over what the final boss could look like, given their current, surprisingly empty surroundings. Then, the redhead lady points out how this place starkly contrasts. With the dark, smoky atmosphere of the lower floors, it is bright, clear, and luxurious. Our main guy, the leader of the pack, chimes in with his theory. He suggests that angels look terrifying to scare off demons, while demons appear beautiful to lower humans into a false sense of security. He remarks that the more serene and pretty the place looks on the surface, the more dangerous it could potentially be. The other knights agree and decides to be on high alert. As we delve deeper, we discover that this is the first time our boy has ever reached the pinnacle of the demonic tower, and he is clueless about what to expect on this floor. Meanwhile, the knights reflect on their journey, attributing their success to the efforts of their seniors who guided them along the way. One of them praises our boy's unmatched fighting skills, as if he has battled these demons countless times before, knowing their weaknesses inside out. Suddenly, the redhead lady turns to our boy with a warm smile, expressing her confidence that as long as he is around, victory is inevitable. Our boy returns her smile, but before anything else can happen, a sudden splatter of blood stains the entire scene. The transition reveals a grim sight. The other knights, aside from our boy, have been brutally cut down, their bodies lying lifeless amidst pools of blood. Our boy stands there in shock, witnessing his comrades' heads roll to the ground. Finally, this mysterious figure decides it's high time to step out, and we can see him sporting a devilish grin. As the camera zooms out, this motherfucker is standing right behind our boy, with a menacing glint in his eye, and our guy is just losing his mind. Instantly, he whirls around with his sword at the ready, demanding to know who is behind him, because he did not even sense someone sneaking up. Without missing a beat, he swings his sword directly at this cocky bastard standing defiantly behind him. But this guy starts talking, taunting him about the strike being pretty good, but it seems his sword has gone a bit brittle. As we pan around, we see the poor boy's sword has practically shattered into a hundred pieces, despite it being the strongest weapon known in the world, and all it took was one cheeky devil to break it. Before the hero even had a chance to budge, there is the devil, just chilling right behind him, asking what he is up to. The moment the hero turns around, a devastating blow comes flying his way, sending him crashing into the wall with just one hit. The poor guy ends up pinned against the wall, leaving a lovely mural of blood splatter. But, he is not throwing in the towel just yet. Summoning whatever energy he has left, he musters up some words for the devil, asking if this big dude is actually the demon king. It hits the hero hard that this demon king looks so human. But the demon's got an explanation ready. Turns out, he is the embodiment of all the fears humanity knows, born from our darkest aspects. Naturally, he rocks the human form. So, our boy decides to whip out his special move, the Eye of Truth, to check out this demon's stats. Shockingly, his health bar is not budging, no matter how hard the hero tried. Taking a closer look, he finds out this demon's got unlimited vitality, 
and magic power. You heard that right. This sucker is basically invincible. As the Demon King looms over him like a fierce beast ready to devour everything in sight, the system warnings start going haywire, practically screaming at our hero to hightail it out of there because he has got about as much chance of winning as a goldfish does in a shark tank. But does our hero listen? Nope. He's got more guts than common sense, apparently. Despite the warnings flashing in his face, he stands tall. But then, out of nowhere, the Demon King decides to show off his strength by grabbing one of those annoying system windows and smashing it into a million tiny pieces. Talk about a terrifying sight. The hero's jaw practically hits the floor as he watches the demon casually destroy the very thing that has been guiding him this whole time. The demon just shrugs it off, saying it was just junk in his way, and then he starts questioning the hero about how he managed to find all those fancy weapons and gadgets. He asks him was it because of this system thing. But before our hero can even stutter out a response, the Demon King just says whatever was that it is gone now. As our hero is practically shredding his vocal cords in panic over what the Demon King did to his system, the Demon King lays it out plain and simple. Even if the system was invisible, it was no match for him. Because, let us face it, when you are as invincible as he is, what is a little system to you? So, as the Demon King approaches, his finger sparkling with this ominous energy, our hero's pretty much convinced he is about to meet his maker. But there is plot twist. With just a flick of the devil's finger, instead of meeting his doom, the hero starts glowing with this vibrant green energy. Before he knows it, he is getting the health spa treatment of a lifetime, healing up faster than he can ask what the fuck is this. He is floating there, soaking up this insane healing energy like a sponge, totally bamboozled by this unexpected turn of events. So, he gathers his courage and asks the demon king, why are you healing me? This is where things get even weirder. The Demon King hits him with a question, asking if he is a regressor. Our hero, completely taken aback, has no idea how to respond. The Demon King then starts piecing it together like a supernatural detective. He points out that, considering how well the hero knows his way around the demonic beasts of the lower floors, along with his skills and, let us be honest, his not-so-great moments, it is almost like he has got some clairvoyant skill. But then, the Demon King reasons, if the hero really had such a skill, he would not have been so shocked when they first met. That is when the Demon King drops the bombshell. The hero is a regressor, and this is not his first rodeo, it is probably his second or even third time around. The look on the hero's face says it all after hearing the Demon King's revelation. It is like the Demon King just peeked into his soul and spilled all his deepest, darkest secrets. But just when our hero's about to resign himself to his fate, the Demon King snaps his fingers, like, relax, dude, you are not kicking the bucket just yet. Suddenly, this eerie purple energy starts swirling around our hero as the Demon King starts laying down the cold. Hard truth, our hero's armor might be tougher than nails, but guess who has got the only hammer in town? Yep, you guessed it, the Demon King. And since our heroes regress not once, not twice, but three times, it is no surprise he is decked out in some seriously top-notch gear. So, while our hero's writhing in agony, the Demon King drops the bombshell that his healing technique is gonna keep him alive indefinitely, while his own armor becomes this twisted prison that is gonna hold our hero tight for all eternity. Imagine being trapped, unable to live or die, just stuck in this endless cycle of torment. It is like something out of a nightmare. And there is the poor hero, screaming in agony as his body feels like it is melting away, blood and gore painting a gruesome picture. The hero then vanishes stuck in this painful loop of life and death. Meanwhile, the Demon King just kicks back in his cozy seat like he owns the place, because, well, he pretty much does. Now, the Demon King, feeling all-powerful and whatnot, decides to use his energy to turn those unfortunate hero's corpses into crystals, because apparently, he has got a thing for macabre decorations. With our hero out of commission, the big question on everyone's minds is, who is the new protagonist? But here's the thing folks, everyone, at some point in their lives, feels like they are the main character of their own story. So, how do you determine who the real protagonist is? Well, forget asking the prophets, because they are just gonna give you some cryptic mumbo jumbo. So, you gotta turn to the historians for this one. See, the real protagonist is the one who comes out on top in the end. And guess what? That makes the demon king the big cheese, the top dog, the strongest boss in the game. After the death of the hero Lindsay is, news spreads like wildfire. TV channels are buzzing with reports of his tragic end. The reports state that Lindsay and his team met their fate on the final floor of the tower, just one step away from victory. Panic grips the civilians as they hear the grim tidings. The Awakeners Association expresses their deepest condolences but urges everyone not to lose hope. They call upon those capable to continue the challenge of the tower and prevent the demonic creatures from invading the human world. However, they acknowledge the uncertainty of the journey ahead and the sacrifices it may demand. Amidst the fearful crowd, two figures stand out, striding confidently. As the scene zooms out, we see them as two adventurers. The redhead lady turns to her companion, King Feng, and questions whether they are in the secret S-rank dungeon. 
here is the lowdown. These dungeons are notorious spots where the demonic tower intersects with human cities. They could pop up anywhere, unleashing a horde of demonic creatures that wreak havoc on the surrounding areas. That is why most members of the Awakeners Association spend their time exploring and clearing dungeons within city limits to keep everyone safe. It is a tough job, but someone's gotta do it. Now we see the redhead lady and her companion King Feng gearing up to stride down into the S-rank dungeon. Finally arriving at the other side of the dungeon, the lady turns to King Feng and asks him about the monsters in this dungeon and whether they really drop the blood all. She is curious if it is possible to defeat the demon king with a law-type item. King Feng explains that the blood all is a rule-based artifact, with the rule being that every attack will cause at least one point of damage. He reminds the lady that justice always prevails against evil, urging her to stay vigilant. She apologizes and expresses her faith in him. Then, she remarks on King Feng's genius, despite his youth and how with a few more years of training, he could definitely surpass Lin Xiao. With warmth in her eyes, she confesses that he is her ideal and that she will always support him. As they explore the area, they stumble upon someone else perched atop a dead monster. The lady wonders if that guy had managed to acquire the blood all. Little do they know, it is none other than the bad boy demon king himself who is here to snag this rule-based artifact. He figures that there will always be clever humans attempting to use rule-based artifacts to defeat him, so he came here in advance to manipulate these monsters into giving the blood all to him. But then, King Feng, with all his confidence, extends his hand and demands the blood all from the guy perched on the monster. The demon king cannot help but chuckle at the audacity of these fools who do not even recognize him and dare to demand the blood all. He thinks they are just a couple of thugs trying to mug him. However, King Feng quickly reminds him that they are doing this for the sake of humanity, so it cannot be called mugging. He introduces himself as Bai King Feng, confident that the guy above knows who he is as well. King Feng believes that powerful items like the blood all belong in the hands of individuals like himself, so he demands that the guy hands it over. But the Demon King is not one to entertain such chatter. Suddenly, the red aura surrounding him intensifies, alarming our hero. Without hesitation, the Demon King hurls a lightning whip at King Feng. However, King Feng counters the attack with his own rule-based artifact, his unbreakable shield. Zooming into King Feng's face, it is evident that he is struggling. He is now forced to believe that he is not facing an ordinary opponent. In the blink of an eye, the Demon King makes his next move, leaving King Feng frozen in place. As the scene zooms out, we see him grabbing the lady by her throat, and the Demon King finally asks King Feng if he is the same guy who is supposed to be the successor of the hero Lin Xiao. So, here's the deal, the Demon King lays it out straight for King Feng. He tells him that if he can destroy his crystal magic cube, then he will let King Feng and his little admirer friend out of there. He assures King Feng that he has always kept his word, but King Feng does not seem interested in negotiating. Instead, he starts gathering energy in his hand, determined to do this for the sake of all humanity. He even pledges to build a memorial in honor of the Demon King. Without hesitation, King Feng lunges at the Demon King with all his speed, but the Demon King gracefully leaps out of harm's way. As he watches King Feng, who did not hesitate to attack, the Demon King wonders if this guy really cares about the life of his admirer at all. He questions whether he is still lacking in understanding true human nature. King Feng, however, makes it clear that the strongest heroes are always alone, and sacrifices among the people are inevitable. He blames the Demon King for being the source of all the misfortune. But the Demon King argues that not everyone might see it the same way. Meanwhile, the red-headed lady, tears streaming down her face, asks King Feng how he could be so cold-blooded. She has followed him for so many years, only to see this side of him. But then, she screams at the top of her lungs, urging him not to worry about her and to run as fast as he can. She tells him to use his crystal magic cube to escape from there while he still can. This guy just does not know when to quit, does he? Once again, he starts spouting off about how he is some kind of genius blessed by the heavens, the new hope of humanity and all that jazz. He takes this fighting stance that, let us be real, looks more like a lizard pretending to be all high and mighty. Then he goes on with his nonsense about justice and all that crap that no one really gives a damn about. He is blabbering on about standing resolute with determination and the will to win, like he is some kind of motivational speaker or something. And would not you know it, the lady seems to be buying into this motivational garbage too. But the Demon King starts laughing like a maniac after hearing this cockroach spew his nonsense. Then, he gets serious and reminds him that if he is not going to run, then do not blame anyone else, because things are about to get real. As the Demon King extends his hand, purple energy swirls around the hero, and the ground beneath him erupts into debris. The poor guy starts to fall into this abyss, his face painted with hopelessness as he realizes he is about to lose and die just like that. Meanwhile, the Demon King casually suggests that he can drink piss from the Nether River if he is thirsty. He further mocks this trash hero if he this kind of death is heroic enough for him. But as the hero plunges deeper into the depths, he is screaming for the one thing he does not want, to die. Once cocky and full of bravado, he is now begging the Demon King for mercy, but there is no compassion for this guy. As he descends deeper, the Demon King starts covering the hole again, sealing his fate. So, the king just casually strolls out of there, leaving the lady totally devastated. 
she is just reeling from how that jerk met his end so easily, and now she is feeling like she is ready to kick the bucket too. But then, she turns around with tears streaming down her face, only to see that the Demon King is bailing without offing her. She is asked him if he is letting her off the hook. While he is cruising up the stairs, he reminds her that the crystal magic cube has been destroyed, and he is true to his word about letting both of them leave. But he cannot resist adding a chilling reminder that it is a shame the hero could not make it out alive this time. And just in case she is entertaining any ideas of crossing paths with him again, he makes it crystal clear that he will make sure to finish the job next time. And just like that, the lady is left sitting there, the only thought racing through her mind being whether the Demon King is actually letting her go. Meanwhile, the Demon King strides out, finally taking a step through the portal. And would not you know it, the furious devil that once terrorized the shit out of them all has now transformed into a normal teenager boy. He is just casually strolling amidst the crowd like it is no big deal, as if he had not just been wreaking havoc and striking fear into the hearts of everyone around him. So, it is the dead of night, and we find ourselves outside the headquarters of the Awakeners Association. Inside the quarters, the receptionist is busy asking a guy if he is interested in joining the Awakeners Association. Maybe the guy says yes, and the receptionist practically bursts with happiness, reminding him how crucial it is to have new recruits, especially with monsters running rampant these days. She warmly welcomes all potential Awakeners, especially the handsome ones. The receptionist eagerly asks for the boy's name, and would not you know it, it is our devilish boy himself, rocking the stolen identity of King Feng. With a mischievous grin, he declares himself as Bai King Feng, the hidden genius that everyone in the world knows about and he is super eager to join the Human Awakeners Association. In the following scene, we find ourselves in the Seven Elders Hall of the Awakeners Association headquarters. There is this shady hoodie guy whispering that of the Seven Elders, only six remain. One of the Elders speaks up, expressing disbelief that Elder Lin Zia, who possessed the power of regression, would falter in challenging the demonic world. Another guy chimes in, reminding everyone that as long as the Demon King remains within the Demonic Tower, he will have unlimited vitality, infinite mana, and the blessings of the Demonic Tower. He emphasizes that they cannot keep allowing human heroes to sacrifice themselves and need to come up with a new plan. He reveals that he has already called upon all of humanity to abstain from challenging the Demonic Tower. Instead, he suggests that everyone must search for items capable of sealing the Demonic Tower, ensuring that the Demon King and the Demonic creatures remain trapped inside forever. This would prevent the demons from ever storming into human cities through the dungeons again, ensuring the safety of human cities indefinitely. To add to the intrigue, he mentions that he has already summoned a chosen one from a parallel world, henceforth referred to as the Traveler from a place called Earth. As the discussion continues, a lady chimes in, echoing the same sentiment about the Travelers from parallel worlds being the key to saving the world. She adds that currently, the soul of this traveler resides in Lin Xiao's little brother, Lin Feng's body. It is said that since arriving in this world, he has been reserved but with unique thoughts. Right now, he is leading a small but formidable party, delving into dungeons in search of artifacts capable of sealing the demonic tower. Then, one of the old man adds to the conversation, mentioning that last month, during the full moon, he conducted a divination for Lin Feng. It indicated that he would soon find the artifact to seal the demonic tower. So, it seems like the demonic tower is on the verge of being sealed. As the old man strolls down the corridor, nursing his booze, while the lady, brimming with excitement after hearing the news, eagerly asks the senior prophet if Lin Feng has indeed found the artifact that can seal the demonic tower. She wants to know if the demonic tower will truly be sealed soon. If that happens, she expresses her happiness that humans will finally be safe. The old coot turns to the lady and hits her with a thought-provoking question. What if the demon king is not inside the demonic tower when it gets sealed? But instead, he is out here roaming around a human city. Suddenly, sealing the demonic tower seems about as useful as a screen door on a submarine. Caught off guard by the question, the lady admits that it does make sense. So, what other options do they have? But before she can ponder it further, this old pervert decides to take things up a notch and spanks the lady on the butt, sending shivers down her spine. Talk about an unexpected turn of events. After giving her a good whack, the old coot starts laughing like he just heard the world's best joke. He casually strolls away, mentioning that he was just kidding and that there is no way the Demon King would be outside of the Demonic Tower. Well, it seems like the old man has had a bit too much of the good stuff, because now he is going off on a tangent about the Demon King's potential demise. He adds that if the Demon King were to leave the Demonic Tower, he would lose his blessings and become just another top human expert. And once his true identity as the Demon King is revealed, well, let us just say his days are numbered. The old man's mind seems to be doing somersaults from all the booze and speculation. He is either convinced that the Demon King will stay put in the Demonic Tower and be sealed away for eternity, or he will venture out and face the wrath of the endless humans, meeting his end in the process. Either way, as long as Lin Feng finds that sealing item, the humans are in for a victory. But while the old man is lost in his drunken predictions, the lady decides it is high time she makes her exit. After all, she has got other stuff to take care of, and dealing with the booze-fueled prophecy session was not exactly on her to-do list for the day.
So, the old coot finally ventures into his office room, expecting a quiet moment of solitude. But to his surprise, as soon as he swings the door open, he is greeted by an unexpected sight, a boy standing right there in the middle of his sanctum. The old coot's nerves are rattled as he stammers out, demanding to know how the heck this guy managed to infiltrate his room. But his fate would have it, this guy is none other than our devil boy himself. With that trademark twinkle in his eye, our devil boy confidently declares himself as Biking Feng, the newest addition to the Awakeners Association. This old guy strolls in and casually asks if he is the new recruit, going on about Biking Feng's reputation as the hidden gem. But the boy kind of brushes off the whole hidden genius thing, saying he is all in if it means getting rid of the Demon King. And there is no need for buttering him up. The old guy then starts talking about how kids these days are too serious and tells the boy to relax and take a load off. The boy mentions hearing rumors that this old dude is one of the big shots in the association, like, he can predict the future and stuff. So, he is here to ask him to do his thing and predict what is up with the Demon King. So, the old man basically tells the boy he is taking this Demon King thing too lightly. He says if his divination skills could really see the Demon King's future, humanity would not be relying on someone like Lin Zio, but on him instead. He explains that his divination mojo only works on a full moon night, and he has got to physically touch the person to see what is up. Suddenly, the boy is all intense, his demon vibe going strong, and he grabs the old guy by the collar, asking if tonight's the full moon. The old man asks him if he is for real or just playing dumb. He explains it is not just the full moon, he also needs physical contact. Plus, he is not some fighter who can waltz into the demon tower to meet the demon king. He cannot just send a fancy invitation either. As the tension thickens, the boy's hand hovers over the old man, and suddenly, it hits the old man like a ton of bricks. This kid is not Bai King Feng, he is the demon king himself. Quick on his feet, the old man activates his divination mojo and predicts that the demon king will meet his end at the hands of a human next winter. But then, the demon boy flips the script and starts delving into the old man's mind. He lifts the old coot into the air and demands to know if his prophecy is legit. The old man's freaking out, begging for mercy, blabbering about how he can be useful. The demon boy then challenges him to divine his own fate, whether he is gonna get snuffed out by the demon king tonight. That is when it dawns on the old coot that he is royally fucked. So, here's the scoop on this wild ride. In the modern world, there is this dude who got sucked into a parallel universe from zero to hero, battling monsters, leveling up, and basically living out his own action-packed fantasy. He is all about mocking those arrogant types, strutting his stuff, and being the big shot. But, plot twist, on one crazy day, this supposed trash ends up taking down the Demon King. And get this, that guy is actually our protagonist, just a regular Joe from Earth, scraping by at the bottom rung of society. Now, he is on his way to work, nose buried in some novel about transmigration tales, when bam, he gets smacked by a truck and kicks the bucket. But, like clockwork, he wakes up to find himself smack dab in the middle of that very same book world he was reading about. Only this time, he is not the hero, he is Lin Feng, the lazy, evil little brother living in his brother's shadow. Despite being dealt this crappy hand, our guy's not sweating it. Because he has got insider knowledge. He knows all the plot twists and turns, every nook and cranny of the storyline. So, he spills the beans to his old man about this magical item that can seal the demon tower for good. And just like that, the game's changed. Now, he is standing tall in the main hall of the Awakeners Association HQ, surrounded by his crew. Even though his bro, Lin Zio, is out of the picture, he is convinced the real hero of this story has not shown up yet, and guess what? He is ready to step up and save the day. This dude's grinning ear to ear because he has got Lady Zio by his side. Let me tell you, this lady is something else, ice cold beauty named Laia. Back in his old life, he would not even dare dream of being in the same room with such a knockout. But in this life, she is his fiance. And that timid girl he used to overlook halfway, that is her, always looking to him for rescue, like a scared little rabbit. But here's the kicker, he is actually getting along with her now. He is reassuring her, telling her she will be safe here at headquarters. And get this, he is even kind of enjoying it. Imagine that, him cozying up to this airhead beauty who is all about romance. It is like a total role reversal for him. Suddenly, he is starting to think maybe those transmigrators do have it pretty sweet after all. Then, he decides it is time to bounce and tells his crew he has got some business to attend to, so he is dipping out first. But then, the redhead pipes up, asking Lin Feng where he is off to, saying he is off to have a little chat with the great prophet. Now, our guy's got big plans. He figures once he is the hero who sealed the demonic tower, he will be able to have whatever he wants, so he is not sweating a few ladies now. Meanwhile, Lady Zio's heading over to the receptionist's table, telling them she is here to request a service. The receptionist asks her what kind of service she need, and that is when Lady Zio drops the bomb, pushing forward the timid redhead and saying she wants to recommend someone to join the association, Lai Tianchen. She spills the beans about how Lai Tianchen was saved by Lin Feng and her when they were exploring a dungeon. Turns out, Tanshin is the only one who has seen the Demon King and lived to tell the tale. 
The receptionist jaw practically hits the floor hearing all this. Tianchen confirms it, mentioning how she and Bai Kingfeng encountered the Demon King, but he bit the dust while she managed to escape. Later on, she joined forces with Lin Feng and Lady Zio. So, the receptionist drops a bombshell. Bai Kingfeng, the dude they are talking about, just joined the association and is alive and kicking. Tianchen's jaw practically hits the floor hearing this news. Now, back to our demon boy. Still rocking the Bai Kingfeng disguise, he has got the old coot by the collar, eyes popping out like he has seen a ghost. The old man's begging for mercy, but this demon dude's not having it. He asks if the old coot's done divining his fate. But the old man's still pleading, offering to work under him and do whatever he asks. But the demon king is not interested in spare change. He is like, enough with the begging. Then he throws out a question, is this all you have got? He used to think humans were all about courage, justice, and strength like Lin Zio, but it seems he has still got a lot to learn about his enemies. Finding a guy like this old coot among humans throws him for a loop, but his concern dwindles. In a weird twist of fate, he decides to send the old coot in the depths of hell as a token of appreciation for the entertainment. With a tight grip on the old coot's throat, the demon king watches as the life drains from his eyes. After dealing with the old guy, he starts making his way out, thoughts swirling as he strides towards the portal. As he steps through, he cannot shake the nagging feeling that if he returns to the demonic tower, and Lin Feng manages to get his hands on the sealing item as the prophecy foretold, he will be trapped there forever. On the flip side, if he tries to stop Lin Feng, he might fail and end up getting snuffed out by some hero, just like the divination set. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Regardless, it is too risky for him to leave the demonic tower just yet. He has got the prophecy burned into his brain, so his best bet is to head back first. Maybe he will figure out a way to dodge fate later. He remembers there is a back door around here somewhere, but before he can make his exit, someone places a hand on his shoulder. Turning around, he comes face to face with Lin Feng, who is asking who this mysterious guy is and why he has never been seen around before. The Demon King plays it cool, sticking to his disguise and saying he is a recent addition to the association. But the blonde dude is not buying it. He points out the S-rank badge, a telltale sign of strength, and asks if the Demon King's really that powerful. Lin Feng then throws out an invitation, asking the demon guy to join their team as they go retrieve the item that conceal the demonic tower. Just so you guys are not feeling lost, Ling Feng does not know who this guy actually is. I'm just referring to Demon King as Demon Guy. Ling Feng now officially introduces himself, and he is pretty confident this newcomer knows about him. After all, he is about to make waves by sealing the Demon King, and his name will soon echo throughout the world. Seeing that this guy seems like a talented addition, Lin Feng extends an invitation to join their team. With a pleasant smile, the Demon King agrees, eager to see if the Great Prophet's prophecy will indeed come true. With that settled, the newcomer starts following Ling Feng, who is busy boasting about his leadership skills and how fortunate the demon guy is to have met him. Lin Feng even hints at his impending fame, saying his name will soon be known far and wide. He instructs the demon guy to follow him obediently and attentively, promising not to mistreat him in the future. Then, he drops a tidbit about rescuing a beauty during his last mission, Bai King Feng's partner, who miraculously survived an encounter with the demon king. Curious, the demon king asks about this lone survivor. With a pleasant smile, Lin Feng reveals her name is Lai Tianchen, already a member of their team. He assures the demon king that he will get to meet her soon. Meanwhile, the demon king decides it is best to make his exit, knowing full well that if he comes face to face with this lady, he is in deep trouble. As the demon king tries to slip away unnoticed, Lin Feng turns around and asks where he is off to. Quick on his feet, the demon king spins a yarn about his hometown pig about to pop out piglets, needing his assistance with postnatal care. Meanwhile, Lin Feng's utterly baffled by this random story. Just as Lin Feng is trying to stop the demon king, their party members join the scene, Tanshin and Lady Zio standing at a distance. Lin Feng waves at his ladies, then leans in toward the demon king, playfully mentioning that this guy might not realize it. But being surrounded by beauties every day can get a bit tiresome. But hey, he's got no other choice, and these ladies seem to enjoy being around him. As Tianchen's gaze falls upon the newcomer, the Demon King prepares himself, ready to unleash his purple energy if things take a turn for the worse. He is grinding his teeth in frustration, anticipating how bad this scenario could potentially become. But he keeps his cool, turning around and greeting Tianchen with a pleasant smile. To his utter shock, Tianchen rushes forward and envelops him in a tight hug, relieved to see Senior Bai Kingfeng safe and sound. She asks him when he managed to escape the Demon King's clutches. Meanwhile, Lin Feng is also losing his composure, questioning if this guy is actually King Feng, considering in the original story Bai King Feng had already met his demise. While Tianchen gets cozy with senior Bai King Feng, expressing her worries and anticipation to see him again, the Demon King finds himself utterly baffled by this unexpected turn of events. After all, this lady was supposed to recognize him as the Demon King, not warmly embrace him as Bai King Feng. Now, she goes on expressing her gratitude, grateful for being saved by Bai Kingfeng from the demons last time. She is not one to forget kindness, so she vows to repay him from this day forward. 
she mentions how she will continue to follow him because she truly admires strong people and believes in repaying debts. The Demon King is even more puzzled now, witnessing this lady's admiration for him and her desire to repay his kindness. It is his first time encountering a human who wishes to seek refuge with the demons. With a pleasant smile, the Demon King reciprocates, stating that she is a wise person and he will not mistreat her. It seems like Feng King is not exactly thrilled about the idea of losing the chick from his party. Meanwhile, Lady Zio, observing from the sidelines, is fascinated to witness the rumored genius awaken a Bai King Feng in action. She introduces herself as Zio Ya. Then Feng King chimes in, reminding Zio that she is his fiance. So how can she be switching sides now? Zio gets straight to the point, interrogating Bai King Feng and Tianchen about their encounters with the Demon King and what he looks like. The redhead describes him as ferocious and terrifying, while the Demon King nonchalantly mentions he just looks like a bad person. The three of them burst into laughter as if they are old friends having the time of their lives. Meanwhile, Lin Feng is grinding his teeth, annoyed by this brat stealing his side chicks. He recalls from the original story that Bai King Feng died early on at the hands of the Demon King, and Tianchen was the only one who had seen him before. Now, he is wondering if his actions and interventions are causing a butterfly effect. But before jumping to any conclusions, he decides to consult the Great Prophet about this guy. Suddenly, the receptionist rushes in, clearly in a hurry. She drops a bombshell, the Great Prophet has been killed just half an hour ago. The redhead flees in terror, while Lady Zio is also shocked to hear about the old man's death. Lin Feng, grinding his teeth in frustration, instructs the receptionist to seal off the association and investigate the people who met the Great Prophet. The demon guy then speaks up, claiming that the only people who met the Prophet were Captain Lin Feng and himself. But Lin Feng calls bullshit on this excuse, mentioning that he did not even get the chance to meet the prophet. As soon as he arrived, he found this suspicious character lurking near the door. It dawns on Lin Feng, realizing that this Bai King Feng is the one who killed the great prophet. Lady Zio tries to calm Lin Feng down, urging him not to act rashly. But he pushes her away, screaming at the top of his lungs that they have all been deceived by this guy because he is not Bai King Feng. Lin Feng lunges into the air, fist ready to strike, determined not to be deceived by this imposter. But the demon guy remains steadfast, a grin spreading across his face. He effortlessly sidesteps Lin Feng's punch and makes it clear that trash like him, who cannot even compare to Lin Zio, is not worthy to talk to him like that. With a devastating blow to Lin Feng's back, he leaves Lin moaning and writhing in pain. As Lin Feng tries to rise, he is met with another brutal blow to the head from the demon king's leg. Lady Zio is losing her composure, horrified to see her fiancé taking such a beating. On the other hand, the red-headed lady is strangely aroused, witnessing her idol unleashing such violence. With his leg pressed against Lin Feng's face, the Demon King taunts him, asking if that is enough to calm him down. Meanwhile, the Demon King finds it odd that Lin Feng is so certain he is not Bai King Feng. The Demon King speaks up, mentioning that he has heard of Lin Feng before, the little brother of Lin Xiao, also known as the Hope of Humanity. He labels Lin Feng as worthless and untalented trash, continuing to mock him by saying he is even worse than he imagined, and he still prefers Lin Xiao. Now, Lin Feng is seething with anger at being called trash, especially after experiencing transmigration and receiving overwhelming buffs, elevating him above others. He refuses to let someone insult him like that. Lady Zio intervenes, explaining that Lin Feng did not mean any harm, and he used to be an honest person. She pleads with the Demon King not to hurt him. Suddenly, Lin Feng gathers his courage and leaps into the air, and stands on his two feet once again with his S-Class weapon, the Omni Soul Racking Claw, on full display. It is a sharp weapon worn on his fist. The Demon King starts mocking him again, questioning if a scum like Lin Feng even has an S-Class weapon. Despite his tough exterior, deep down, the Demon King knows that an ordinary S-Rank Awakena is not his match in a one-on-one -on -one fight. But he recalls the list of human geniuses that did not include Lin Feng's name. Before things escalate further, an authoritative figure steps in and commands everyone to stop. This figure emits a blue energy from his mouth toward both combatants. Lin Feng suddenly finds his magic disappearing, while the Demon King is bewildered by this rule-based power. The figure shimmering with blue light is none other than the president of the Awakena Association. His powers neutralize all supernatural abilities within the vicinity. Now the teacher reminds them that every member of the association is a valuable asset in the fight against the demons. He questions why these two individuals are having internal strife. The Demon King is freaking out because he is in the presence of the president, and without his buffs from the demonic tower, he is vulnerable. He knows if his cover is blown, he is in trouble. So, to avoid any further complications, he decides to be careful with his behavior from now on. He immediately bows his head before the president, apologizing profusely, claiming it is all his fault, and promising it will not happen again. But beneath his apology, there is a smirk on his lips that suggests otherwise. Then Lin Feng speaks up, pointing his finger at the Demon King, questioning why the president did not intervene when the Demon King was punching him but now steps in when he tries to retaliate. He demands to know the meaning behind this and accuses the president of taking sides. Lin Feng further challenges the president, 
questioning if he also believes that Lin Feng is trash. In his thoughts, the Demon King wonders if this Lin Feng truly is a genius, who is able to obtain an S-class weapon and the map of a divine item. He cannot help but question why this fucker does not seem to possess the intellect and character for it. Meanwhile, Lin Feng continues to shout, now pointing his fingers at the president while the president tries to calm him down, dismissing his accusations and insisting that he has never taken sides, only working for the future of humanity. But Lin Feng said enough. He storms out, grumbling that everyone here thinks he is worthless. Well, he will show them all. Just wait till he gets that ceiling item and locks down the tower. Then they will see who is really the hero around here. After watching Lin Feng storm off, the president breathes a sigh of relief. He then places a hand on the Demon King's shoulder and begins showering him with praise, acknowledging Bai King Feng as a strong individual whom he admires for his strength, calm demeanor, and courtesy. The Demon King reciprocates with a pleasant smile, but inwardly, he is calling it all bullshit, wondering if this is why everyone adores Bai King Feng so much. The president goes on to mention that a preliminary investigation into the Great Prophet's death revealed traces of demonic power at the crime scene, suggesting that a demon may have escaped from the dungeon and killed the prophet. He assures that it has nothing to do with humans, and a thorough investigation is needed to uncover the truth. The president emphasizes the importance of searching for the divine item and suggests that the Demon King should work closely with Lin Feng, as he believes the Demon King, disguised as Bai King Feng, holds the future of humanity in his hands. The Demon King agrees to go along with it, but deep down, he knows he is not the savior of humanity, it is quite the opposite. As the president heads out, he throws them a casual remark about how it is up to the younger generation, like Lin Feng, to shape the future of humanity. Taking this to heart, Lady Xiao decides to trail Lin Feng, noticing his recent mood swings. However, before she can leave, the demon guy stops her and casually asks if she has noticed any changes in Lin Feng's behavior lately. I think he is trying to figure out if someone has transmigrated into Lin Feng's body. But suddenly realizing his slip-up, he backtracks, apologizing nonchalantly and explaining that he was just concerned about Lin Feng's recent impulsiveness and scene-making. The Demon King knows he needs to tread carefully. It is all part of his plan to stay incognito, he cannot risk blowing his cover with sudden probing questions. So, the lady, now starting to warm up to this Bai King Feng guy, reveals something interesting about Lin Feng. Apparently, Lin Feng used to be a bit of a cowardly nobody, just your average trash. But then, one day, he woke up with a whole new personality, talking about transmigration, cheat codes, and parallel worlds. Lady Zio thought he was just half asleep or something, but then he transformed into this completely different person. Suddenly, he was confident, flashy, and seemed to have insider info on all the top-notch items and weapons. It was like he had some sort of superpower, able to get whatever he wanted and that is why he is kinda weak, relying solely on those S-class gadgets and stuff, barely scraping by as an S-class hunter. She goes on to mention that both their family's elders speculated that Lin Feng had some sort of enlightenment or maybe awakened some incredible skills, but he always brushed them off, never giving a straight answer. Now, alarms start ringing in the Demon King's mind upon hearing about enlightenment and awakening. But he knows it is not that simple. Lin Feng seems so sure that the Demon King is not actually Bai King Feng, yet he does not dare to voice the reason behind his claim. With Lin Feng's impulsive nature, the Demon King wonders what could make him hold back information. He even refuses to confide in his family and fiancé. The Demon King realizes that if Lin Feng is not the original, revealing the truth could mean Lin Feng's demise at the hands of his own family. With the mention of parallel worlds and the sudden change in personality, the Demon King becomes increasingly certain that someone has taken possession of Lin Feng's body. It is a real head-scratcher, that is for sure. Suddenly, a booming sound reverberates through the area, catching everyone's attention. Lady Zio shrieks, wondering what is causing the commotion. Outside the building, people are shouting about an A-class demon rampaging through the city, with no one to stop it. One person mentions that Sir Lin Feng is attempting to fend off the monster. Inside, we witness Lin Feng facing off against the A-class demon, armed with his S-class weapon, the Raging Flames Frost Flying Sword. He is feeling all confident, believing that such a measly A-class demon should not even dare to cause trouble in his presence. With swift moves, he hurls down sharp crystals at the beast and then unleashes the power of his S-class weapon, the Meteor Star. As he brandishes his weapons, he declares himself as the hero destined to protect everyone. With a mighty crash, he strikes the beast with his sharp blade, slicing through it like a hot knife through butter. As onlookers cheerfully remark about Sir Lin Feng's prowess in defeating even an A-class demon, one masked individual wonders if he is the new genius who has been in the spotlight recently. Lady Zio joins in the jubilation, showing her support for Lin Feng. Meanwhile, the Demon King knows the true nature of the corpse canine. It was once a stray animal in the city, slaughtered by humans. After its death, its resentment latched onto the demonic energy in the demonic tower, condensing into an A-class demon. This particular species of demon is quite rare, and most humans are unfamiliar with it. It possesses distinct characteristics. As Lin Feng goes berserk, striking the poor beast relentlessly to display his might, it eventually crashes to the ground seemingly lifeless. 
However, according to the Demon King's inner monologue, when the beast receives enough attacks, it fakes death and then rejuvenates as an even stronger demon, a monster among the ranks of S-class creatures. While Lin Feng stands tall, basking in what he believes to be the glory of defeating the monster, the onlookers praise him with love and shower him with compliments. Even the red-headed lady, standing behind the crowds, is intrigued by Lin Feng's display of strength. Lin Feng himself is reveling in the adulation, confident that his actions will make him famous throughout the world. However, the atmosphere suddenly takes a dramatic turn as the defeated beast begins to rise once again, emanating even fiercer vibes. Its eyes shimmer red, its claws grow larger than before, and as the scene zooms out, it becomes apparent that Lin Feng now appears like a rabbit facing an elephant compared to this ultimate beast, a corpse canine mutated into a double S-class demonic hell canine. The terrified motherfucker turns around to find a gigantic monster looming behind him, leaving him utterly petrified. The fucker wonders how this could even be possible. Without wasting a moment, the monster unleashes its fierce fiery breath toward Lin Feng. He struggles to withstand the intense pressure of the fiery onslaught, desperately trying not to be pushed back. However, the beast decides to crank up its fiery power even more, spewing fire like a dragon on steroids. With just that, once confident Lin Feng now crashes to the ground, utterly defeated while his mouth dripping blood. The onlookers, witnessing the flames in Lin Feng's dire situation, start to panic and become utterly terrified. Chaos breaks out among them, and they begin to run around frantically for their lives. After almost turning into a human barbecue, surprisingly, Lin Feng is still alive. And true to his cocky nature, he is just brushing off the fact that he got smacked with a hit. But then, when he steals another glance at this monstrous thing, he realizes it is a double S-class monster, and as of right now he is just inches away from becoming a pancake. And just when it seems like he is done for, along comes Lady Zio, sprinting his way. She immediately gives him a hand to get up and tells him to lean on her because they need to bolt as fast as possible. But this monster is not having it. It is towering over the whole scene, crackling with lightning like it is a best fit for a horror movie. As they are turning to hightail it out of there, Lin Feng sneaks another peek at the monster. Meanwhile, the lady supporting him looks like she is on the verge of tears because she is pretty convinced they are about to be toast. Just as the monster is gearing up to turn them into its next snack, our devil boy makes a dramatic entrance. He is right in front of the gigantic beast, ready to give it a serious beatdown. Charging up energy in his palm, he knows that if Lin Feng kicks the bucket, he will never find that divine item they have been after. So, he figures it is better to save Lin Feng for now and punches that monster right in the kisser. He then realizes that his monster is not obeying him and is glaring at him with a murderous intent. So, he sternly asks the monster if it does not recognize him. Suddenly, the once furious monster, dominating the scene, turns into a scared kitten. Now, the behemoth is trembling in its boots at the sight of the demon king in front of it. He telepathically tells the monster to scram, and just like that, while the Lin Feng is standing there stunned, the monster immediately takes off, and everyone watches as the monster retreats like a scared puppy. The onlookers are completely flabbergasted, wondering why that demon just bolted in fear as soon as Bai King Feng glanced at it. They are all scratching their heads, trying to figure out why this supposedly fearsome demon is acting like such a coward. Some are even starting to question whether the demon suddenly got stronger or if Lin Feng somehow lost his edge. Of course, they are now praising our demon boy's way and speculating that the demon must have run away because he is just too powerful. Lady Zio, still supporting injured Lin Feng, throws a heap of gratitude by King Feng's way and curiously asks how he managed to scare off the demon so effortlessly. But this guy downplays the whole situation, telling her that maybe the monster ran because Bai King Feng himself looks tough on the outside but is actually weak on the inside. Now, our devil boy is thinking that at least after saving Lin Feng, he will earn some respect from him in the future, so there'll be no more tension between them. But little does he know, Lin Feng grabs his collar and goes off on him, shouting and accusing him of doing it on purpose. He is convinced there is some special secret about that a class demon and our demon boy used some sneaky method to scare it off. Lin Feng goes on to ask if Bai King Feng intentionally set up the whole situation just to swoop in and play the hero, making a fool out of him. He keeps on pressing Bai King Feng, asking if he is happy now that he has stolen all the glory and hogged the spotlight. Lin Feng just will not let up, repeating over and over that it is all Bai King Feng's fault. He starts calling the devil boy a scumbag, accusing him of not saving his comrade's life just to show off his powers. He is convinced that Bai King Feng stood by and watched him get roasted and pummeled by that monster on purpose. After getting an earful from this blonde scumbag, the demon guy just remains silent. But after enduring so much insult, he realizes one thing, not every human deserves to be saved. That is when the demon boy decides to act. He grabs Lin Feng's hand and twists it around, causing Lin Feng intense pain. Then, he asks Lin Feng what hidden secret he is talking about, making it clear that it was just a normal A-class demon. He tells Lin Feng that he is the incapable one, the failure at playing the hero, and now he is just here looking for excuses to avoid embarrassment in public. But Lin Feng is getting more and more irritated to see this guy. 
he looks at the onlookers, who have started to think negatively of him. They are wondering why Lin Feng is so cranky and how he can indiscriminately blame others, completely oblivious to the fact that Bai Kingfeng was the one who saved him. Then, the red-headed lady throws in her two cents, stating that from what she can see, Lin Feng must have failed to act cool and now he wants to regain his pride. The other black-head lad, with a terrified look, reminds everyone that the great prophet is also dead, and only Lin Feng and Bai Kingfeng are at the scene. She asks who would have a motive to kill the great prophet. The red head indirectly points her finger at Lin Feng, reminding everyone that he suddenly became so strong and questioning if he is using some kind of immoral forbidden art. Now, Lin Feng is feeling terrified because these clowns standing on the sidelines are now thinking all sorts of bad things about him. They just cannot see through Bai King Feng's disguise, and the public is leaning toward him. It is a real mess. Finally, the devil boy lets go of Lin Feng's arm, leaving Lin Feng wondering why he is being released. This is when the devil boy extends his hand with a pleasant smile, mentioning that it must be a misunderstanding. He tells Lin Feng to calm down and suggests they reconcile. But Lin Feng is just even more pissed, his eyes shimmering in red at the sight of this bastard playing innocent even after gaining an advantage in the situation. Left with no choice, he grabs Bai King Feng's hand and stands up. He also plasters a pleasant smile on his face and decides to play it cool too, publicly admitting that he lost his cool just now from being hit by that demon. He tells demon Bai King Feng to please excuse his rudeness. He promises to be better from now on and throws a bunch of gratitude Bai King Feng's way for saving his life. With a pleasant smile, he tells the demon boy to please take care of him in the future. It is all about saving face now. But the demon boy, still smiling, mentions that there is no need to be so polite as he is the one who should be thanking Lin Feng. He leans towards Lin Feng and with a sassy smile and a mischievous glint in his eyes, whispers into his ear that it is all thanks to him that he is not the only suspect, since he is the one who killed the prophet. Hearing this, Lin Feng almost loses it, realizing that this guy killed the prophet. He prepares to punch the sassy bastard in the face, but then the lady chimes in from behind, grabbing Lin Feng's hand and asking what the hell he is doing. She reminds him that everyone is watching and questions why he is suddenly targeting Bai King Feng. At this point, Lin Feng has no clue what to do other than seethe in anger helplessly. He finally shrugs it off, deciding not to engage with this bastard. But Lin Feng is deeply troubled by who this sassy bastard is and what his goal might be. As Lin Feng grapples with confusion and rage over encountering this mysterious figure, he is perplexed by the fact that there is no mention of someone this powerful acting as King Feng in the novel. He is convinced that the original story cannot possibly veer off course. Lin Feng's anger practically radiates from him, giving off creepy vibes. Now, as we delve into the demon boy's thoughts, we hear him scheming. He plans to snatch the sealing item from Lin Feng, and if Lin Feng becomes a hindrance, he is prepared to take his life. After all, if the sealing item is destroyed, humanity will face certain doom sooner or later. He is dead set on the belief that those who pose a nuisance should meet their end. It is a chilling glimpse into his sinister intentions and the clash is inevitable between them. In the following scene, we find ourselves at Café Semper, where we see the waitress serving a cup of coffee to the demon boy, with Lady Zio seated right in front of him. First things first, Lady Zio expresses her gratitude for him saving her life from the hellhole. The demon boy warmly accepts her thanks, but in his mind, he does not even remember when he saved her. Moving on to business, the lady states that the team is close to obtaining the sealing item, and Lin Feng has kept the location recorded on a map secret, only mentioning it is in the south. With blushing cheeks, she mentions that the journey will be long and hopes that the demon guy will get along with Lin Feng. She humbly requests him to overlook Lin Feng's behavior, making it sure that she has known him since they were young and reassures that he is actually a good person. The demon boy, stirring his coffee, responds with a simple is that so. Meanwhile, he knows a fact, Lin Feng is not himself anymore. It is repulsive to think that a tainted soul from a parallel world has taken over the body of an innocent human in this world, enjoying the love and concerns of a lover that rightfully should not belong to him. And yet, here he is, talking about becoming the hero who will protect this world. As soon as he took a sip of the coffee, the dude just spat it out with a cough, totally grossed out by the taste. He left the lady completely bewildered and made the whole situation super awkward. Then, he started wiping off the spilled coffee with a tissue while being all disgusted with himself. It is like he could not wrap his head around human taste buds, even though things were not this complicated back in the day. Anyway, getting back to business, he casually brought up the question, asking the lady if she ever thought maybe Lin Feng is just sick, which could explain his sudden change in his behavior. With a sassy grin, he asks if she wants him to revert back to his old self. Then, he drops the bomb that down south, there is this item they can snag alongside their mission this time hinting it might just be the ticket to getting Lin Feng back to normal. The lady practically jumps out of her skin in shock, asking if he can really make Lin Feng go back to how he was before. He responds with a casual of course, and it is like she has unintentionally made a deal with the devil. But deep down, all he is really after is that ceiling item. Now we are out on the city streets, and there is Lin Feng, storming down the road looking like he has been through a monsoon of anger. He is frustrated as heck, realizing that the current storyline is just a prequel and the real deal has not even kicked off yet. 
But then, thinking about this prequel, he remembers vividly that Bai Kingfeng did not make it out alive, while the Great Prophet bit the dust even before the story began. Suddenly, a light bulb goes off in his head, and he recalls a moment when he first met Bai Kingfeng. The guy was acting all suspicious, practically sprinting away. But as soon as Lin Feng mentioned the ceiling item, he did a complete 180 and agreed to join the team. Then, another realization smacks him right in the face. He starts to wonder if his own transmigration and presence here have caused a massive deviation from the original storyline. As far as he knows, Bai Kingfeng was supposed to vanish quietly, leaving without a trace. That is probably why the original story did not mention some random person impersonating Bai Kingfeng for a day or two, or why the culprit who off the great prophet was never caught in the novel, because he was meant to disappear into thin air yesterday, never to be seen again. And in the original story, Bai Kingfeng never showed up again after leaving. But now, thanks to Lin Feng's unexpected involvement, a character who was supposed to exit stage left has wound up joining the crucial mission to find the seal. Now he is left wondering if this is going to totally rewrite the ending of the original story, and the mere thought is freaking him out big time. At this point, he is practically banging his head against the wall in frustration. He had this grand plan to flip his fate from being a nobody in his past life to becoming the glorious protagonist after transmigrating to another world. But he never anticipated it would be this much of a headache. His dream of becoming the glorified main character is starting to crumble right before his eyes. As he is pounding his head, he spots something nearby. Lo and behold, it is the same Café Semper where Lady Zio is chatting it up with that demon guy. He squints, taking a closer look, only to realize that Lady Zio is now cozying up with Bai Kingfeng. Now he is grinding his teeth in frustration, while thinking if his fate is playing tricks with him. Suddenly, a light bulb goes off in his head, and he is dead set on one thing. He will not let the storyline change. He is the only one in this world with an omniscient viewpoint, and he is determined to grab hold of everything he desires. He is the chosen one, and he is not about to let anything or anyone mess with his destiny. The next day rolls around, and there is Lin Feng with his squad, facing off against the association president. The president reminds Lin Feng that it is absolutely crucial for humanity to get their hands on that ceiling item, and he is the one leading the charge on this exploration mission. With those final words of encouragement, the president sends them off without delay. With everything crystal clear, Lin Feng strides out with an unbreakable resolve, feeling the weight of responsibility on his shoulders. As they leave, the association workers stand behind, applauding the crew for their bravery and determination. And then, in a moment of sassy camaraderie, Lin Feng shoots a glance at the demon guy, who returns the look with an equally sassy expression on his face. In the following scene, we find ourselves in this fiery, lava-filled place, where these volcanic monsters are roaming around, clearly not thrilled to have these unexpected guests crashing their party. They have started surrounding the squad, closing in from all sides. We catch a glimpse of the demon guy sending his purple energy blobs flying here and there, while Lin Feng is slashing down monsters left and right with his sword. The whole squad stands firm on their feet, ready to take on whatever comes their way. Lin Feng mentions that these creatures are not particularly strong individually, but they just keep coming, one after another, making it a real hassle to deal with. Meanwhile, the demon guy is feeling pretty fed up with himself for helping these humans eradicate the demons, but he figures he has got no other choice for now but to roll with it. Suddenly, the demon guy takes a glance behind his back, where we see one squad member beefing up, green energy swirling around him as he harnesses his poison element technique. He prepares his sword and thrusts it straight into the ground. As soon as the sword makes contact, poisonous green energy erupts, engulfing the mindless monsters. The scene zooms out, showing this green energy spreading everywhere. The monsters start turning into dust, and in the blink of an eye, the entire horde vanishes into thin air. We see him now catching his breath after unleashing such a furious technique. The demon guy is also intrigued by this kid's guts, and finds himself impressed. Meanwhile, the redhead, being her usual self, starts praising the kid for his amazing performance, which totally embarrasses him. He quickly downplays it, saying he is not good at one-on-one -on -one fighting but excels against hordes. Meanwhile, Lin Feng is grinning to himself, feeling validated by his decision to bring this kid into the squad. Then, he turns around, grabbing everyone's attention, and mentions that he has something important to tell them. He explains that the artifact they are seeking is just ahead. But the terrain is rough, and he is clueless about the monsters ahead. It could be even riskier than their current situation. Plus, everyone has been on the move non-stop for the past few days, so he suggests they head back to town and take a break while he goes ahead to scout. As soon as he finishes talking, the entire squad starts complaining, saying he cannot just go alone like that. Lady Zio even questions what would happen if he faced mortal danger alone. But Lin Feng insists that as the party leader, it is his responsibility to find the safest path forward. 
However, it is clear the squad is not convinced. Nevertheless, he starts walking away, making it clear he has made his decision and there is no point in trying to persuade him otherwise. Now, it seems that the Demon King is feeling a tad suspicious about this guy. He takes a glance at the poison user, who is crying his eyes out for their leader. But then we see Lin Feng grinning like a maniac, and in his mind, he is doing all of this for the poison user. Though we do not know exactly what he is talking about, let us hope to soon find out. This is where we learn that Liu Xiaok, the poison user, is a rising star born amidst the demon's lair and seasoned in the depths of poison caverns. He is destined to become an S-ranker whose name will shake the world entirely. Right now, Lin Feng sees their relationship as one of short-term cooperation. In the original story, Liu Xiaok was the protagonist's most trusted aide, his unwavering loyalty making him a crucial part of the protagonist's road to success. This happened because, in the original story, in order to cleanse the toxins accumulated in his body since childhood, the protagonist used several high-grade ingredients to concoct an S-class purification potion. Ever since then, Liu Xiaok was willing to sacrifice his life for the protagonist. But now, before the story even begins, Lin Feng plans to subdue him. By doing so, not only will Lin Feng obtain the artifact, but he will also take control of the protagonist's destiny. Lin Feng will replace the protagonist and become the new hero of this world. He turns around once again, telling everyone to wait for him at the back in town, reassuring them they will continue moving forward together once he returns. With that final goodbye, he starts striding out confidently. He knows that only a few people know where to find the ingredients they need. Fortunately, he remembers a vivid description of the location from the original book. As soon as he finds the ingredients, he is pretty sure Liu Xiaok will become his loyal subordinate. Now, the Demon King is just standing there, watching him go. He knows he does not know much about human nature, but there is a nagging feeling in the back of his mind that Lin Feng is not the selfless type. Now, Lady Zio speaks up, saying she has heard about an underground auction house not far from here. She decides to check it out and promises to meet everyone back in town in a few days. However, the red-headed lady insists on going with her. This is where we learn the real reason for Lady Zio's trip to the auction. The Demon King has filled her ears with bogus information, claiming that Lin Feng's soul is being devoured by a demon. Supposedly, this is the reason behind Lin Feng's sudden change in personality. Lady Zio is determined to win an item from the auction that can purge souls, in hopes of bringing back the real Lin Feng. While the two ladies are striding out of the scene, the Demon King watches them go. Then, the bulky guy from the squad speaks up, suggesting they do as Lin Feng instructed and head back to rest. Just as the big guy is about to leave, he is called by the Demon King. He turns around, asking the Demon King if he has a problem with him or is unhappy with Lin Feng's decision. The reason this bulky guy is not getting along with the Demon King is because Lin Feng is unhappy with him. So, he figures this guy must not be a good person. Then Bai Kingling speaks up, expressing how deeply moved he is by team leader Lin Feng's decision to scout ahead alone. He mentions that he cannot help but worry about him, although his facial expression suggests otherwise. He then suggests that everyone secretly follow behind Lin Feng. That way, if Lin Feng falls into danger, the squad members can help him out. The poison guy's face lights up with happiness and calls him a good guy indeed, while the bulky guy also agrees, stating that he has been worried sick about his young master all this time. Meanwhile, Lady Zio gets the wrong idea and thinks that perhaps this guy is really worried about Lin Feng. She assumes that he must be a warm-hearted person deep down. Little does she know that this guy is a devil in disguise. The Demon King chimes in, telling his friends to stop overpraising him, as everything he does is for the sake of humanity. He is not wrong, he may be doing this for humanity, but his underlying ambitions might not be as pleasant as they seem to others. As the scene transitions, we see chess pieces scattered around, but these are not your typical pieces. They are huge, with glowing red eyes. As the scene zooms out, we realize it is a giant chessboard. This place is the S-ranked dungeon known as the Malicious Chessboard, and my man is casually striding into it. He is here because, according to the original book, one of the ingredients, the purification crystal, is somewhere in this chessboard. Unfortunately, he does not know which piece it is located in. It is a risky move, but he is determined to find it, no matter the cost. As soon as he enters the place, he feels a sense of dread. He turns around only to find this king piece towering over him, charging without hesitation. This giant motherfucker is no ordinary Joe, it is the king himself, and above its head, there is this red spirit. The young man is utterly baffled to see a chess spirit casually hanging around. As the spirit extends its hand toward the boy, he prepares to unsheathe his sword. But in comparison to this monstrosity, the dude looks like a pinch of salt and flour. Nonetheless, he hurls down his sword, clashing right with the giant hand. However, his face contorts into these creepy expressions because the force in front of him is so damn heavy. Instead of going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, he makes the wise decision to step out before getting completely screwed over. But just as he steps back, bam, another motherfucker sneaks up behind him, landing a direct hit on his back. He spins around to find a pawn spirit aiming to stab him with its spear. He then pulls off some air acrobatics that would make a ninja jealous and leaps out of harm's way. 
but before he could catch his breath, it seems another blow is coming his way, this time from a horse piece. Without hesitation, he brings out his giant sword, an S-class weapon known as the Horse Slashing Sword, determined to slash this horse's legs down. With unwavering confidence, he swings his sword, commanding the horse spirit to die. However, the horse spirit is stubborn, and it grabs the sword with its jaws. The S-class weapon is nothing more than a crumbling cookie in the mouth of this horse. The guy is left utterly dumbfounded by this unexpected turn of events. This is where we learn that countless vengeful spirits, who died on this chessboard, had their souls devoured by the chess pieces, forever confined to this place. They have been chowing down on vengeful spirits for god knows how long, making them stronger than your average S-class demon. It finally dawns on him that he has got to run as soon as possible. With a quick flick of his wrist, he conjures up some energy wings and takes off into the sky like a bat out of hell. After putting some distance between him and those hungry chess pieces, he stops to catch his breath. But then, he spots something that stops him dead in his tracks. As he looks up, we see this queen piece towering over him like a skyscraper. Despite being up in the air, he feels smaller than a pesky fly next to her. It is like she is ready to squish him without a second thought. And, Lin Feng's sweating buckets, probably enough to fill a swimming pool. Then bam, it is like watching a slow-motion disaster where the queen's hand connects, and Lin Feng goes down faster than a lead balloon, leaving nothing but a cloud of dust and debris. As the dust settles, there is Lin Feng, sprawled on the ground like a half-baked pancake, barely holding on to consciousness, and enstrolls the king, towering over him like a skyscraper. With Lin Feng surrounded and looking like a lost puppy, it is that moment when he realizes he has fucked up. At this point, poor Lin Feng knows he is trapped tighter than a pickle in a jar, and here comes the king's hand, reaching out like fate itself. Lin Feng's practically on his knees, praying for a miracle. After going through all that trouble, getting transmigrated into this crazy new world, he sure as heck does not want to have the same trashy death as before. But then, out of nowhere, a giant hand materializes on the king's noggin, crackling with electricity like a faulty light bulb. And who do we see behind it? None other than the demon king, who is of course disguised as Bai King Feng just casually smashing the king into a gazillion pieces with his bare hand, like squishing a particularly pesky bug. Well, looks like Lin Feng's prayers finally paid off, saving his ass for the day. As the debris rains down from above, he sneaks a peek to see who the heck just saved his bacon. But man, the demon king's crashing down faster than a speeding bullet, smashing through those chess pieces with such gusto that Lin Feng's head's spinning faster than a roulette wheel. In a matter of seconds, it is game over for the chessboard. Pieces flying everywhere, like a chaotic game of dominoes. Lin Feng's left standing there, trying to wrap his head around what the heck just happened. And then, like a beacon in the chaos, he hears voices calling out to him. He turns around, only to find his trusty party members. The big guy rushes over, offering his master a helping hand and asking if he is alright. Lin Feng manages a shaky I am fine, but he cannot help wondering why his gang is suddenly crashing his party. The big guy spills the beans, saying Bai King Feng was fretting over Lin Feng like a mother hen, and others were worried sick too for Thier Master. So, they decided to play detective and follow Lin Feng's trail, just in case he stumbled into trouble. The poison guy jumps in, confirming the story and then he asks what the fuck Lin Feng was thinking before suddenly challenging the s rank dungeon by himself. He then tells Lin Feng to thank his lucky stars because if Bai King Feng had not insisted they tail Lin Feng, he would have been six feet under by now. The plot twist hits Lin Feng like a freight train. He is left processing the fact that Bai King Feng of all people saved his life. But the surprises do not stop there. After turning the chessboard into a hot mess, the Demon King stands there like a boss, casually flexing his muscles. Then, out of nowhere, spooky ghost-like figures start creeping out of the rubble, surrounding him like a haunted halo. Lin Feng's eyes widen as he realizes these are the souls of the hunters who bit the dust thanks to those chess pieces. And guess what? They are not haunting the Demon King, instead they are thanking him for setting their souls free. As if that is not enough, they present him with a rare material purification crystal. At this point, Lin Feng is flipping out because this crystal is the holy grail he has been chasing, and now it is in Bai King Feng's hands. It is like a bad dream, the one thing he has been striving for snatched away by the last person he expected. Now, the Demon King shoots Lin Feng a doubtful glare, and suddenly, silence blankets the scene like a heavy fog. There stands the Demon King, casually flaunting his prize, sporting a sneaky grin and eyes that practically sparkle with mischief. He then teasingly asks Lin Feng if he wants this precious stone. But just to twist the knife a little deeper into the wound, the Demon King tells Lin Feng it is a shame he cannot have it because it now belongs to him. Deep down, the Demon King senses there is more to this than meets the eye. He may not know Lin Feng's in-game, but the look on his face screams significance. So, the King is dead set on not letting the Lin Feng have his way. The bulky guy chimes in, throwing a reassuring smile at his frustrated master. He suggests they are lucky to have someone as capable as Bai King Feng on their side now, and he urges his master to stick together as a team from here on out. 
but Lin Feng's mind is like a pressure cooker ready to blow, stewing over the fact that he cannot bring himself to duke it out with Bai Kingfeng for the fragment, especially in front of an audience, especially when Bai Kingfeng is the one who nabbed it in the first place. He is convinced he could have taken down those pesky chess pieces solo if given a bit more time. So, he explodes out of frustration, telling his comrades to shut their traps because he is perfectly fine and does not need their concern. Then, like a balloon deflating, he floats out of there as fast as he can, trying to salvage what is left of his dignity. He tells his squad to go back while he scouts the place solo. Now, Lin Feng's gears are turning. Even without the purification crystal, he figures he can still whip up a semi-finished potion using the remaining materials. It might not be as potent, but hey, beggars cannot be choosers. It is enough to keep his plans chugging along, even if they hit a snag or two. The Demon King stands there in silence, a smirk slowly spreading across his face. He knows that the more Lin Feng tries to conceal, the more it reveals about his hidden agendas. He is practically itching to see what exactly Lin Feng's got up his sleeve. But for now, he is content to sit back and watch the show. Fast forward, we are now in the S-Class dungeon, Dire Bones Lake. The Demon King's casually lounging on a giant skull, while Lin Feng watches in disbelief. There is the naughty Demon King, snagging rewards from the dungeon once again. Just to mess with Lin Feng, he asks how they keep running into each other. Meanwhile, Lin Feng feels like he is being toyed with by this guy, over and over again, for no good reason. He turns on his heel and starts walking away, grinding his teeth in frustration. It is like a never-ending game of cat and mouse, and Lin Feng's had enough of playing the fool. Once again, Lin Feng finds himself in yet another dungeon, only to come face to face with the Demon King, who is now holding onto the rare material, a bone dragon scale snatched from the A-class dungeon, Bone Cliff. But wait, the drama does not stop there. This marks the fourth time Lin Feng's seen the Demon King swoop in and snag the dungeon's reward right from under his nose. This time, it is the S-Class Dungeon, Wind Whistle Abyss, and the Demon King's got his hands on the rare material, Peerless Water. By the fifth dungeon, everything seems calm, but not for Lin Feng. He is absolutely losing it. Flames practically shoot out of his ears as he teeters on the brink of explosion. Not a single rare material to his name, and that jerk by King Feng snatched them all. And what can Lin Feng do? The Demon King got them fair and square as rewards. Meanwhile, the Demon King's casually juggling all the rare items he has snagged from the dungeons. He is a bit puzzled though. Why would Lin Feng go to such lengths, even trying to ditch his own party? Just to get his hands on these materials. He knows they are valuable, but Lin Feng does not strike him as someone short on cash. So, the king is lost right now as why would the Lin Feng want these? The poison guy steps forward, pleading with Bai King Feng to come and help them talk some sense into Lin Feng before he digs himself into an even deeper hole. But then, his eyes widen in disbelief as he sees Bai King Feng casually juggling those artifacts he have been desperately searching for all these years. Suddenly, the poison guy's eagerness takes over, and he eagerly asks Bai King Feng if he could please take a look at those materials he has obtained. In the following scene, the Demon King begins to use his alchemy skills, causing all the items to float into the air, ready to merge together. With a little magical mojo, he utters the word combine, and just like that, the materials transform into an elixir. Voila, he has crafted the coveted S-Class purification potion that Lin Feng has been craving all along. With a triumphant grin, the King holds the potion in his hand, knowing full well its value. Then, he shoots a glance at the poison guy, who finds himself on the verge of tears. This legendary S-Class purification potion is right there in front of him. The poison guy had searched high and low, consulting every high-class alchemist he could find. But none could create it. The Demon King breaks the silence, casually asking if the boy really needs it that badly. With a nonchalant toss, he throws the bottle to the poison guy, telling him it is all his now. But the poison guy can hardly believe his luck. His mind reels at the thought of receiving such a precious elixir so easily. His face breaks out in a sweat as he realizes that with this potion, he can finally purify the poison that has plagued his body for years. As the unexpected unfolds, the poison boy falls to his knees, clutching the demon king's feet and pleading to become his most loyal follower. Tears stream down his face as he begs to be the king's faithful lapdog. The demon king is taken aback, immediately telling the boy to back off. He reminds him that it is just an A-class potion, nothing to get so worked up over. But the boy seems undeterred, even more so when he realizes Bai King Feng is not demanding anything in return. He sees Bai King Feng as a selfless person and pledges his unwavering loyalty, vowing to follow him anywhere. The Demon King's patience wears thin as he tells the boy to back off. He is the freaking Demon King, and having human followers is getting way out of hand. Despite the Demon King's efforts to shake him off, the boy remains stubborn as a tick, clinging to him like glue. It is a scene that is both amusing and exasperating for the Demon King, who is starting to feel like he is in over his head with this clingy kid. Try as he might, he just cannot seem to shake him loose. On the other side of the coin, Lin Feng is boiling with frustration. 
his face contorts with a myriad of enraged expressions as he witnesses Bai Kingfeng gaining the allegiance of the Poison Boy. Meanwhile, the Demon King, sensing Lin Feng's seething anger, turns around and wonders what has got him in such a tizzy. Why is Lin Feng acting like this? And why were the materials he was gathering all along meant for this Poison Boy who'd been searching for them for years? It finally dawns on the Demon King. Lin Feng's grand plan was to win over the Poison Boy to his side. But inadvertently, the Demon King beat him to it. Now, he finds it intriguing that Lin Feng knew exactly where to find the items. But he still cannot wrap his head around why Lin Feng is so certain that the real Bai King Feng is already dead. This mystery is one the Demon King is determined to unravel at all costs. Now, we witness Lin Feng finally regaining his composure. He turns to his bulky friend and suggests they head back to rest. He decides they will wait for Lady Xiao and Tianchen to return before they embark on their mission to retrieve the Tower Ceiling Divine Item. Meanwhile, the Demon King stands in silence, observing Lin Feng's turmoil. At this point, Lin Feng is absolutely livid. This Bai King Feng has been thwarting his plans at every turn, and he is determined to rid himself of this nuisance once and for all. It is the dead of night, and we find ourselves outside a hotel, and inside we find the bulky guy kneeling before Lin Feng, paying his respects. Lin Feng then issues a command to his lackey to go and kill Bai King Feng. The bulky guy's eyes widen in disbelief as he reminds Lin Feng of Bai King Feng's kindness, how he has always been there to save them. But Lin Feng is not interested in hearing excuses. He orders his lackey to carry out the deed, reminding him of their long history together and questioning his loyalty. The bulky guy acknowledges his unwavering loyalty but expresses his doubts about the order. He mentions Bai King Feng's unfathomable power, warning that he is no match for him. That is when Lin Feng reminds the bulky guy of his trump card, the forbidden technique that could temporarily elevate him to the legendary SS class for a brief period. With a trembling voice, the bulky guy lays it all out, using such a technique would cost him his lifespan, and his family has served Lin Feng's family for generations. He reminds Lin Feng of his promise to treat his servants like family, but Lin Feng simply brushes it off, asking if the loyalty he swore to him does not count for anything. He then reminds the bulky guy that he is destined to be the hero who obtains the sealing item, carrying the future of humanity on his shoulders. He urges him to make a small sacrifice for the sake of humanity's future. At this point, the poor bulky guy is guilt-tripped beyond measure, and he finally makes up his mind. He gives in to Lin Feng's wishes, expressing his willingness to make the sacrifice not for the sake of humanity, but to fulfill the oath he swore to Lin Feng. And with that, a devilish glint sparks in Lin Feng's eyes, signaling his satisfaction with his servant's compliance. In the town's garden, the Demon King stands alone, awaiting someone's arrival. Suddenly, he notices a disturbance in the pond's water. His eyes narrow as he catches sight of something hurling towards him. As the scene zooms out, we see crystals emerging from the pond, ready to strike the king head on. It dawns on him that someone is attempting to assassinate him. More and more crystals materialize from the pond, intensifying the onslaught. The Demon King is losing his composure as the entire pond freezes in an instant. It becomes clear that this is not just any attacker, it is someone from the SS class, wielding this frosty trickery. He wonders when he could have possibly offended a human expert of such caliber. The crystals rain down relentlessly, and he is about to become a victim of this icy assault. The entire frozen water crystal descends straight towards him, and crashes down right above him. Finally, the man responsible for the attack strides out, and to the Demon King's surprise, it is none other than the bulky guy. From the look in his eyes, it is clear he has sacrificed his humanity for the sake of his master's wishes. Now, he has resorted to using an SS-class forbidden technique, a move that is currently devouring his lifespan. With shimmering red eyes, the bulky guy turns to face the Demon King amidst the onslaught of ice. This is where we see the Demon King sporting a small cut on his face, and he does not seem to be thrilled about it at all. Then, a malicious and creepy grin etches across his face as he tells the bulky guy that he is the first human to have ever wounded him. As the ice begins to fade from the scene, the stage is set, and the Demon King stands tall, reminding the bulky guy that he is the first human to ever wound him. However, he clarifies that despite this, the bulky guy has barely scratched the surface. After all, with a whopping 10-digit XP bar, the Demon King's HP has only been reduced by a measly one point. The bulky guy then takes his stance, expressing his respect for Bai Kingfeng but also his determination to end him swiftly to spare him suffering. The Demon King simply nods, welcoming the challenge as he is curious to witness the capabilities of an SS-class expert firsthand. Suddenly, the blood leaking from the Demon King's face freezes in place, transforming into deadly projectiles aimed back at him. He narrowly manages to avoid the attack, but he is left clutching his chest as he feels his blood turning to ice within him. So, the big guy finally spills the beans that he can control all sorts of liquids, even the blood inside human bodies. But then, he has this light bulb moment and realizes this guy's blood is like no other, and he just cannot seem to get a grip on it. That is when the Demon King starts glowing with this funky purple aura. So, the big boy decides to crank things up a notch. Under this moonlit night, he is all set to freeze everything to death with his icy powers. That is when the demon figures out it is this intense black-colored stuff, mana. 
He then throws this question at the big guy, asking if this human has the guts to use demon mana without fear of going berserk. But this big guy is clear about his loyalty to the young master and the Lin family's reputation. The whole sky starts crackling with lightning, and he is pumped up, ready to kick some serious butt. Meanwhile, the Demon King's frozen in his tracks, unable to move an inch. That is when the frozen shards start to descend from the sky, and they are not just falling gently. Nope, they are picking up speed like they have got a date with destiny. They morph into blades, slashing down on the Demon King like a swarm of angry ice ninjas, making him struggle with each swing. Then, bam, an explosion rocks the area right over the Demon King's head turning everything into smithereens. Meanwhile, our big guy is cranking up the intensity of his blasts with each passing moment. He is like a mad scientist mixing potions. But instead of potions, it is frozen fury he is brewing. He gathers his energy once again and lets it rip at the demon king. The whole area turns into a frozen fortress, and in the midst of this icy chaos stands our big guy, pulling out all the stops. But hey, all that power comes at a cost. The guy is trembling like a leaf in a hurricane, and before you know it, he is flat on his back, eating snow. It is finally curtains for him. His forbidden power-up is fizzling out faster than a cheap firecracker, and it looks like his life's on the line too. But just when he is about to retire, out struts the demon king, leaving the big guy utterly bamboozled. He is completely thrown off to see Bai King Feng standing there all chill, like he is waiting for a bus or something. The Demon King gives him this nonchalant shrug, saying it is game over for this motherfucker. Despite pulling out all the big guns, he has barely made a dent in the Demon King's never-ending HP bar. But King gives the credit where it's due. He is impressed that this bastard managed to chip away at his health this much. Now, it is the King's turn to shine, and he is looming over the big guy like a dark cloud on a sunny day. And the poor boy is just sitting there in disbelief, feeling like he has wandered into a boss fight way above his level. At this critical moment, the Demon King goes all out and places his hand over the big guy's face, who is still scratching his head, wondering how the heck this is even possible. But eventually, he throws in the towel and tells Bai King Feng to do the deed, since he is pretty much toast anyway. He has always been ready to sacrifice himself for the Lin family, and now it looks like his wish is about to come true. But then, Bai King Feng reminds him that even if he does not off the big guy, he is still on borrowed time due to the after-effects of his power-up. He has basically mortgaged his lifespan to activate that forbidden technique. So keeping that in mind the big guy gives the green signal to take his life and make it quick. Suddenly, green energy starts swirling around, and before you know it, the demon king is not taking the big guy's life, he is healing him instead. Now, the big guy is completely gobsmacked by this unexpected turn of events. This is where Bai King Feng lays it out plain and simple, he never gave the big guy permission to die just yet. But deep down, the king knows he cannot afford any more trouble so he is not letting the guy die. Meanwhile the big guy is just scratching his head. Wondering how on earth this dude can be so selfless. I mean, just moments ago, he was trying to send Bai King Feng to the great beyond, and now here he is, playing Florence Nightingale. Bai King Feng then drops this bombshell, saying he is pretty impressed by the big guy's loyalty and all that jazz. But, let us be real, when we get a peek inside the Demon King's head, we find out he is just making excuses. His real goal is not just to kill a few human experts, he has got bigger fish to fry. He is gunning to destroy the ceiling item and wipe out humanity altogether. So, he cannot afford to be all penny wise and pound foolish. Demon King knows someone's keeping an eye on him, so he has got to play it cool. And, behind a nearby tree, we spot Lady Zio, peeping at Bai King Feng like he is the second coming of Mother Teresa. She is convinced this guy's got a heart of gold, despite being as tough as nails. Meanwhile, the Demon King's putting on his best kind-hearted act, reaching out to the big guy and offering to head back for some rest. He tells him to do not sweat it about Lin Feng. We will handle him and cook up some excuses. And the big guy is just touched. Like, really touched. He grabs Bai King Feng's hand, promising to repay his kindness tenfold. With that, the bulky guy begins to walk away from the scene, leaving Bai King Feng feeling satisfied that he has gained another ally. With one more target on his checklist, the Demon King decides to play it cool and act all injured, putting on a show for Lady Zio. She takes the bait hook, line, and sinker, rushing to his side like a knight in shining armor. The guy is trembling on the ground, but Lady Zio is there in a flash, grabbing him and asking if he is alright. Meanwhile, our Demon King's keeping up the act, secretly grinning to himself that she has fallen for his little charade. She helps him up, giving him a shoulder to lean on, and reassures him that it is no surprise he is feeling rough after blocking an attack from an SS class. Still pretending to be injured, he mumbles out a question, asking why she is there with her shaky voice. Then, he drops the bomb, asking if she has managed to snag that potion that can restore souls. Lady Zio spills the beans, saying she got it at an auction house where money talks louder than a rock concert. But now, she is having second thoughts about giving it to Lin Feng. She is worried it might feel like a betrayal, and what if his soul is not possessed after all? Just randomly guzzling down potions could do more harm than good. The Demon King starts creeping uncomfortably close to Lady Zio. He starts spouting off about how she is so darn beautiful. He is sure every guy out there has got a crush on her. 
He even throws in some fake concern for her safety, suggesting that maybe this whole soul ordeal is connected to her. The lady's taken aback, wondering if he actually thinks she is beautiful. In her mind, she is recalling all the times men have showered her with compliments, but it is only when Biking Feng says it that she feels a flutter in her chest instead of revulsion. Then, just to add to the drama, he drops the bomb that he knows she is already engaged to Lin Feng. Now, her heart's pounding like a drum solo, and she bolts out of there like her life depends on it. She also lets him know in no uncertain terms that she will going to make Lin Feng drink this potion. And just like that, after manipulating her into downing the concoction, he figures he has got nothing to worry about. But then, we see the big guy is lurking in the shadows, piecing together what is really going on. He has got a sinking feeling in his gut. But he is refusing to entertain the possibility that Master Lin Feng might not be himself anymore. The story resumes, and we find ourselves back inside the Awakeners Association's headquarters, where Lin Feng and his party are having dinner. While eating, Liu Xiaok asks why there are only four members present at the dinner table and where Bai King Feng and Gao Hu are. In case you do not remember, Gao Hu is the large man who attempted to take down Bai King Feng, and Bai King Feng is the demon lord. In response to Liu Xiaok's question, Lin Feng mentions that there is no need to wait for them and suggests they should just eat. Lin Feng then turns to Lady Xiao and informs her that while she was absent, he explored the dungeons around here and is already familiar with the routes, so she can rest assured and follow his lead. Lady Zio agrees, but it seems that she is going through her own set of problems. We then notice a bowl containing a magical elixir that she had acquired from the auction some time ago. She wants Lin Feng to drink it to confirm whether Bai King Feng's presumptions about him being possessed are true or not. However, she is quite nervous about doing so. But eventually, she musters up some courage and picks up the bowl. With an almost natural smile and a firm tone, she reminds Lin Feng about the injuries he got about two days ago, so she made some medicine to replenish his health. The man just stares at her for a moment, before placing his hand right behind her back. He then wastes no time before groping her sweet jiggly ass without a single ounce of hesitation. Needless to say, the lady feels a chill running down her spine after this rather unethical advance by Lin Feng. After that unexpected grab, he expresses his gratitude for her taking care of him, and for that, he promises to treat her nicely. Lady Zio is blushing, and her eyes are losing grip on reality. The tingling sensation on her butt is just too much for her to bear, and she even starts steaming from her head. Liu Zio asks the blushing Zio what is happening to her, but she meekly replies it is nothing while her heart feels as if it is about to burst out of her chest. Just when we take a peek into her head, she firmly believes that there is no way Lin Feng would have done something filthy like this because, according to her, he had always been passive and timid ever since he was young, and he never even dared to confess properly to her. She now actually starts to think that Bai King Feng is actually right. Lady Zio gathers her courage and starts pushing Lin Feng away, demanding him to back off, while Lin Feng, puzzled, asks what has got into her. Suddenly, the sound of heavy footsteps echoes through the hall, grabbing everyone's attention. As they turn around to see, they find Gao Hu standing right at the entrance, and Liu Xiaok is pretty happy to see his buddy back. He also asks his friend if he was out on a mission. Meanwhile, Lin Feng is quite surprised and shocked to see the big guy standing in one piece, making him believe that he finally took care of Bai Kung Feng. The man stands up from his chair and starts walking towards the big guy while telling him that he is quite happy to see him finally back as he was worried sick about him. The big guy, however, instead of exchanging pleasantries or having a moment of respite, straight up lays it out that in order to use the forbidden technique this time, he had to sacrifice 20 to 30 years of his lifespan. After that, he proceeds to tell the result of the battle he had with Bai King Feng. But Lin Feng just cuts him off mid-talk and expresses that it is fine as long as the mission is accomplished. A sacrifice means nothing in the grand scheme of things. He even promises to treat Gao Hu better from now on. Suddenly, the once happy face turns into a sour look after seeing the person standing right behind the big guy. That is right, to shock Lin Feng out of his mind, it has to be Bai King Feng who is standing in one piece. Heck, he even has this smug smirk on his face as if he is laughing at Lin Feng's stunned expression after beating him to the punch. He finally walks up front and innocently asks if Lin Feng is surprised to see him alive. But this blondie is now in utter despair, and just as Gao Hu leans in anxiously to share some information, he is met with a heavy slam to his chest that sends him staggering backward. The man is livid at this point, he is gritting his teeth, and his eyes are totally bloodshot with anger as he calls the big guy a fucking asshole in frustration. Just when Lin Feng thought things could not get worse for him, Lady Zio surprises him by desperately running towards Bai King Feng and leaning behind him. With her face painted with anxiety and terror, she mentions that Lin Feng has become a nut job and cautions our devil boy to be careful around him. The blondie frustratingly reminds her that she is his fiancé, so why is she changing sides? Meanwhile, in the background, Liu Xiaok, under his breath, asks Lady Tian Tian for her opinion on young master Lin Feng and Bai King Feng. 
To him, their relationship seems a bit conflicted today. The lady then mentions that they have always been at each other's throats. Back to this angry blonde dude, who is throwing a tantrum directed at the big guy. He accuses him of being responsible for everything that has happened, calling him a jerk who could not even handle something as simple as this. The big guy is teetering on the edge. He vividly remembers that the second young master has always been timid but kind and compassionate towards the servants. And as of right now, it is obvious that this big guy is injured. But still, Lin Feng does not seem to care about his well-being and is just looking down on him. Much like Lady Zio, he is starting to wonder if his second young master is actually possessed by something sinister. His gaze lands on the soul-cleansing elixir lying on the table. He ponders whether it is true that his second young master is actually in danger. If so, he has no choice but to take action to save him. In the background, we hear the Lady Tian Tian once again, who is asking Liu Zio if Blondie and Bai Kingfeng started fighting, then who is he going to help? But by the looks of Liu Xiaok's face, it is clear that he is oblivious to the beef between both the demon boy and the Lin Feng, so he remains silent. Suddenly, Liu Xiaok notices Gao Hu looming behind him. The big guy respectfully calls out to his young master and presents the bowl of elixir. He acknowledges his failure in the mission and accepts any punishment or scolding that may come his way. However, he urges the blondie to consider his health and take the medicine first, as delaying treatment will just make his injuries from bad to worse. Blondie immediately snatches the bowl right from his hand. Though he is still frustrated and does not remind the gorilla before chugging down the elixir that he is still a trash who was not even able to get a mission done and despite his jacked body all he can do is work as an attendant. As the magical elixir trickles down his throat and settles in his belly, Lin Feng's internal conflict becomes apparent. He could not bring himself to refuse the big guy's caring gesture, fearing it would tarnish his image in front of others. But as the elixir takes effect, discomfort floods his senses. His face contorts in agony, veins bulging on his face as if ready to burst. The bowl slips from his trembling hands, crashing to the ground and shattering into pieces. Lin Feng feels as if someone is choking him to death, and now he is hearing the original Lin Feng yelling at this fake guy, scolding him that his friends are caring for him, not for a faker like him. I have a feeling that the real owner of this body has been watching whatever this fake possessor had been doing to his body. But that is only my theory given the reaction of the real one. But let us hope to find out soon. Lady Zio is terrified to see Lin Feng going through this suffering, and the fact that he is talking to nothing is really scaring the shit out of her. The behemoth is scared as well, and Liu Xiaok is also reeling with the same feeling as his friend. He even goes on asking his young master to whom he is talking to. But Tian Tian, being a bona fide fan of Bai Kingfeng, does not have any fucks to give, so she just sits back, casually sips her tea, and watches the show. Meanwhile, the Demon King secretly hopes for Lin Feng's suffering to escalate, understanding that the more attention he garners, the better. Despite Lin Feng being the sole bearer of the knowledge regarding the location of the Demon Tower's sealing artifact, the king remains indifferent. He is confident in his own power, believing that no one can stand against him. In the meantime, the fake Lin Feng has actually started to struggle against the real one, the fight that is going on in this fake guy's head is really putting him through a lot of pain. Lin Feng grabs the dining tablecloth and pushes it from the table, and it seems the food is about to fall off of the table. He then starts to dash outside, leaving the others bewildered. His head is aching because the real Lin Feng is fighting against this fake one for ownership of this body, and he just cannot let everyone know that the current Lin Feng is fake. So he is running out to avoid drawing any attention. The behemoth immediately turns towards Lady Zio, asking her what they should be doing now. But the lady is as clueless as this giant about the situation. She knows that something is really wrong, but she just does not know how to proceed. While everyone else is freaking out, it looks like Tan Tan and the Demon King are the only ones really enjoying themselves in this crazy situation. It seems that the real Lin Feng has finally taken control of the body. He steps forward, introduces himself to the audience as the genuine Lin Feng. With tears streaming down his face, he admits that he is the useless Lin Feng, and his soul is on the verge of disappearing because another soul from a different world is taking over his body. In between sobs, he confesses that maybe this is his only shot to make something useful happen, to leave behind a legacy for the association. He is about to spill all the beans about the trump card this guy from another world has up his sleeve. So, he starts off by saying that he remembers a novel called The Hero Defeats the Demon King, which predicts what is going to go down in this world soon. He has got every detail of that book memorized and he is planning to pass it on to someone he can trust. According to the story, it all starts with this super smart dude named Lai He. He is destined to be a big hero, the main character of this whole story. The first time Lai He leaves his hometown, he accidentally kills this no-hope nobody who is blindly charging at the entrance of some tavern. That nobody's name is Lin Feng. This little mistake gets Lai He on the bad side of the Lin family, and from there, it is just one danger after another in his life. But before the first snowflake falls, the chosen one, Lai He, is gonna take down the Demon King. And after peeking into the memories of this guy from another world, 
He also figures out that a young dude named Bai Kingfeng is supposed to be a good, righteous individual in the novel. I think things are going to be really messed up, because Bai Kingfeng is not a righteous and a good person anymore but the demon king himself. Anyway, he is about to send out the details of this novel he just mentioned, and if Bai Kingfeng succeeds in defeating the soul from another world, then he will receive this letter once Bai Kingfeng returns to the association headquarters. So, he wastes no time before summoning the transmission spirit bird and handing over his letter to this magical owl. This original Lin Feng is sure that it is a matter of time before Bai Kingfeng will be able to use this novel information to assist the novel's real protagonist and save this world by defeating the Demon King. Just as his own consciousness is fading from his body, he claims that this might be the only great thing he has done throughout his trashy life. With his soul on the verge of vanishing completely, he offers one final wish, for Bai Kingfeng to put an end to the transmigrated soul and triumph over the Demon King. And with that, his soul departs its vessel, leaving the body on the table devoid of life. Finally, the fake wannabe hero is back in Lin Feng's body, and he is seething with anger. He is convinced that if anyone finds out about his true identity then he will be in deep shit. So to avoid that, he now plans to get rid of everyone by tomorrow. In the following scene, we find ourselves in the 10,000 Demon Cave, which is an SS-class dungeon. We see statues resembling demons, and it seems these are actually demons but are on standby for some reason. Anyway, we see the redhead and Liu Xiao chilling inside this dungeon. They are both scanning their surroundings with sheer astonishment. The redhead mentions that this is as expected from a dungeon with a divine items fragment hidden inside, and she is really feeling lucky to have the chance to see an SS-class dungeon in person. Liu Xiao then asks why those demons are not making their moves. He also makes an assumption that perhaps it is because the young master has used some kind of method to immobilize them, and for that, he compliments Lin Feng for being knowledgeable. In any case, we finally see Blondie standing right before this energy blob up on the pedestal, and it seems he is actually with his entire party. Lin Feng is quite excited to see the fragment right before his eyes, and he is about to obtain it just as he had planned. But still, the Blondie is also feeling somewhat dubious, probably about how easy it is to have the fragment right before his eyes, ready to be snatched without any trouble. Lady Zio then mutters under her breath, instructing the Goliath to snatch the fragment from Lin Feng but make sure not to hurt him. The big fellow agrees but not without his anxiety for this task. But before they could do anything, Blondie snags the item and starts shooting his own allies like a maniac. The burst of energy he just hurled down his team's way is really powerful, and it seems that the fragment's power is actually enhancing his powers just as rumored. The Goliath and Lady Zio are utterly dumbfounded to see the young master ambushing them. Just as Lin Feng is flying out of the place, he reveals that he is already aware of everyone's intentions and wants everyone to stay in this SS-class dungeon to get their asses spanked by the demons. And as you can imagine, Fucker is feeling quite happy that once he has killed all of them, then no one will doubt his real identity anymore. So with that in mind, he soars out of the place with bullet speed while laughing, leaving his entire party behind as a parting gift for the demons that are about to awaken. And as expected, every cave in the dungeon that had a demon inside starts to shimmer with bloodshot eyes, and the terrified Lady Zio immediately instructs everyone to watch their backs. The hard peel of this cement-like layer finally starts to peel off their bodies, and after a few seconds, every demon is jumping out of their caves towards the party. It takes these demons no time to surround the entire crew before they could even think of running out. Lady Tian Tian throws some shade, stating that Lin Feng had ambushed them and they are now badly hurt, making it hard for them to overrun these demons. That is when the demon lord points his thumb behind him and tells everyone to run while he will stay here. The entire squad is shocked to hear it, and the big guy even asks if he is sacrificing himself for everyone's safety. But it appears there is no time for further contemplation. The redhead and the goliath take the other two with them, while the redhead even mentions that Bai Kingfeng is sacrificing his life for them, so they must hurry to ensure his sacrifice is not in vain. With determination, Bai Kingfeng declares that he will seal the entrance and hold off any threats while the rest make their escape as soon as possible. Just when Bai Kingfeng is about to close the door of the dungeon, the redhead looks back with a smile, and in her mind, she states that although the Demon King is just acting, his actions are really saving people, and she hopes for the Demon King to successfully kill the imposter Lin Feng. It seems this woman was pretending from the beginning by not recognizing Bai Kingfeng as the Demon King, even though she is fully aware of his true identity. Not gonna lie, she even fooled me until this very moment. When the door is finally closed, a sly grin etches on his face at the thought that after these goons are out of the picture, he can feel free to show his true identity to his followers. He turns around and greets his followers promptly, but it seems these demons do not recognize their king, and they are just about to attack Bai Kingfeng indiscriminately. Seeing this, the king does not waste his time either before taking his stance, while mentioning how it has been quite a while since he left the demon tower, and wonders if they have forgotten who their king is. He then gives a straight blow right under this marching bastard's chin, and the single hit from the demon king was more than enough to launch him into the sky. It seems that this is not the end of it, one down, and there are many more to come. But the demon king does not shy away from using his dark powers either. With a burst of dark energy coming out of him, he throws every one of those fuckers out of his way in one swoop. 
After unleashing his true demonic energy, he asks these beasts once again if they remember their king. And as you can imagine, the man is now just sitting gracefully atop one of the demons, while the others are paying their respects by making sure to bow their heads before their king. After turning every monster to his side in the dungeon, he commands his entire army to march forward and find Lin Feng. Meanwhile, the blondie is just making his way out of this place. While he was at it, he made sure to forge a blood contract with this divine item fragment, and now, no one will be able to use it except him. Just as he is running down with his tail tucked between his legs while calling himself a hero, the next thing that he finds in his way just leaves him terrified out of his mind. Of course, the demon king is standing right before him in his path with his army of monsters, which is unusually exuding this menacing red aura, probably because of their king's might. The guy is just stunned in his tracks as to why there are so many demons blocking his way. The demon king then proceeds to greet Lin Feng with a warm hello, while the blondie just seeds in anger and grits his teeth in frustration because he does not expect to meet a demon in human form. Not to mention a creepy smile etching on that man's face is suspiciously familiar to someone he already know. Nonetheless, he does not have any time to think about anything as he needs to make his escape as soon as possible. He takes a look above his head and sees an opportunity to get out of this mess. He is sure that once he is out of this place he will definitely be the hero. Sure enough, the monsters immediately comply with their king's command. A buffoon and a giant crawling parasite lunge in Lin Feng's way. But the man successfully cuts the parasite down with just a single strike of his sword. He then zips past these monsters with his rapid speed while striking each and every one of them on their heads, ascending into the air as high as possible. A demon dog tries to block his way, but the blondie just strikes it down and leaps further above in the air. That is when the king tells his lackeys to stop fooling around and get serious. And we can clearly see the monsters complying with the command when one of the monsters just bites Lin Feng's leg. The blondie goes absolutely ballistic with his sword and desperately unleashes a barrage of sword slashes on the monster's way. But his sword does not seem to be working against this thick-ass giant snake, and into his already dire situation barges and yet another snake towards his way. It is at this point the blondie knows he is screwed. The snake that was coming his way even bites his own friend to leave no room for Lin Feng to escape. But surprisingly, Blondie somehow manages to flee from this mess, though it seems he ended up sacrificing his own leg in this game of cutthroat survival. His face is sweating profusely, which is already painted with a terrified feeling. But he is determined to escape this place no matter what. He has already obtained the divine item fragment, and he is convinced that he will be this world's savior. However, it seems the monsters that are coming his way from below do not think the same. Anyhow, he is trying his best to outrun these creatures to reach the opening right above his head. Needless to say, the king is feeling quite happy to see Lin Feng being torn apart by his minions. He compliments them for their great work and encourages them by saying that there is no need to keep this bastard alive. After having a little dose of encouragement, the Goliath grabs the terrified Lin Feng's hand immediately, but then he turns around with his sword, demanding this bastard to let him go. It is hilarious to see that this goofball actually thinks that these flesh-eating monsters would listen to him if he told them to let him go. Almost instantly, another monster joins the fray and bites the blondie on his belly. Once again, he frees himself at the cost of another sacrificed limb. The monsters are hot on his heels, and the guy is utterly destroyed. But still, he has not lost his hope because he has almost reached the exit. But the demon king just laughs at this ridiculous notion of hope, and mentions that hope is the most brutal violence. However, it seems that Lin Feng might make it out after all, and he also himself seems quite convinced that he will get out of this hellhole eventually, and once he is out, he will definitely be the hero and he is pretty sure of it. But when Lin Feng's face contorts in disbelief, it becomes painfully clear that his plans are about to hit the steel wall. And instantly, the scene cuts to the demon king who is already perched above the entrance hole. His face is sweating profusely, and he cannot seem to understand how this guy is so fast. He was just at the bottom a second ago, but then he is sitting right before his eyes. That is when the king makes it clear that the blondie is not going anywhere. At this point, we can hear Lin Feng's thoughts, and it seems he has found out that this man was just toying with him all along and the realization makes him wonder about the extent of the Demon King's powers. Suddenly, a storm of mighty fire surrounds the entire area, and Lin Feng is just falling down like a rubber duck after climbing up so high. The fire has stopped from intensifying, but the blondie is still falling down like a bird with no wings. He eventually hits the ground in a rather painful way. His entire body is bruised up, and while he is coughing, we can clearly see Bai King Feng's hand approaching him. But a barrier immediately halts the Demon King's advances towards the blondie. When he looks at his smoking hand, he realizes that the divine item fragment is rejecting him. Needless to say, he is quite bewildered and questions himself as to what is happening and why he cannot touch the divine fragment. This is when we hear the blondie's faint chuckles, his laughs directed at Bai King Feng, who is standing right before him. Lin Feng asks how he is still alive and teasingly mentions if he is here to grab something. Of course, he already knows that Bai King Feng wants the divine item fragment to probably become humanity's hero. But the blondie makes it crystal clear that this is not going to happen because he has already forged a contract with it, and it can only belong to him now. Even if he dies, Bai Kingfeng would never be able to undo the contract. 
you can almost see the disappointed look on Bai Kingfeng's face because he knows that it is going to be really painful to deal with. Suddenly, we see Lin Feng's soul doing limbo out of his body. Although I do not know what is happening, it seems the Demon King is probably the one who is manipulating his spirit. Even though his spirit is drifting out of his body, Blondie remains his usual self, saying he will not let Bai Kingfeng off easy. He is convinced the guy is not worthy of being this world's hero, and he would rather drag him to hell than let him have it easy. Not going to lie, the chapter ended at a really weird point, and there's no more material for me to write further. Anyway, let us wait for the next chapter to arrive to finally cover the epic finale of this arc, because I am really eager to see if Bai Kingfeng will be able to get the Divine Fragment. With that said, stay tuned until the next episode, and I'll see you guys very soon. Until next time.